Hey, welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're in Exodus chapter 34, verses 12 to 16. Watch yourself that you make no covenant with the inhabitants of the land into which you are going, or it will become a snare in your midst. But rather you are to tear down their altars and smash their sacred pillars and cut down their asherim. For you shall not worship any other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous god. Otherwise you might make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they would play the harlot with their gods and sacrifice to their gods, and someone might invite you to eat of his sacrifice. And you might take some of his daughters for your sons, and his daughters might play the harlot with their gods and cause your sons also to play the harlot with their gods. Okay, so we're coming into a section here with a set of interesting directives and reminders. Uh, and it might sound, again, pretty much out of sync with our day. Remember, like you've seen the coexist bumper sticker here in America. We have cars that sometimes you'll see. I don't know. You don't see a lot of bumper stickers, but uh, they have the... Uh, the Muslim, the Jewish thing, the Christian thing, the Hindu thing. They have four or five or six different symbols there. And it says, let's all at peace or let's all get together or united or something like that. Like, uh, it doesn't really matter what flavor uh, you have. Just just, uh, just let's all be religious in our own way. And let's not worry about particulars or specifics. And uh, all, these are the, the, all these religions are the same. They're the same about... Um, violence and, or are they? Are they really the same? Are all these religions the same? Then they're not, not one of them is the same. Uh, some are rather similar. Judaism and Christianity bear some similarities, which we, which we would expect. But what do we have here? Uh, notice God is, is warning, watch yourself. And so our first thing, when you see the coexist idea, the first thing you should do is say, hey, wait a minute, time to be on, uh, time to be on notice here. We got a warning, watch yourself. He says, make no covenant. And why? Is it because this is a race thing? Like we don't want to mix the races? That's not what it's about. But we find in the text that it's about worshiping false gods. Be careful about making an agreement with others, with other peoples, with other people groups, with people groups that are antagonistic toward the God, the worldview of the Bible. Be careful about aligning with those groups. Why? Not because we don't like the color of somebody's skin, not because we don't like their accent, or the the way they adore with the you know their the way they dress it's because we don't want to be uh, embrace foreign gods and then the warning in our text we just read it right maybe if this if you do if you make an agreement with them your your sons and daughters will begin marrying them and you'll begin they'll begin worshiping their false gods and false gods of course lead you to destruction and so it's about the false gods it's about that it's not about the race thing so God wants his people to be distinct, uh, not because he's trying to put us up with, you know, put our nose up high, uh, like we're better than someone else. It's not that. He wants that there's, there's, there's two kinds of worshipers. There are those who worship the true God, who made the heavens and the earth and all that in them is. And there's people who worship false gods, which can't do anything for them whatsoever. And so a false god is not love. The true God is love. A false god is going to get you into trouble. It will not have the same values as the God, uh, the God that we see outlined in Scripture. So, consequently, we don't. We want to be careful there that we do not wind up being agreeable to receiving all these false gods, the false modes of worship, and winding up kind of messing our character up so that we're tangled and messed up and we're not like Jesus. So, there you find I think some reasons to be very careful about being. You know, it's one thing to be. Uh, friendly, to be neighborly to a person who's in a totally different religious thing. Um, hey, uh, be friendly to them all day long. But to embrace the, everything they teach is legitimate, to embrace uh, them such that we're agreeable to marrying uh, them and having a family all messed up, you know, part of it's from God and part of it's a false God. You're setting your family up for great trouble there. So let's set things right. And God has a good plan here for us. Let's make sure we're right. Let's not have traps like the Asherim and so on. Among God's people, these things shouldn't exist. If people want to set up their own, you know, that's their business. But in our midst, in the church, we should not allow. There's things we just simply shouldn't allow. A church that has no boundaries is uh, hardly a church at all. Just like a country that has no boundaries is hardly a country at all. So friends, let's, let's look at God's commands and say yes. Let's look at God's commands and actively embrace them, actively follow them. And his blessings will come to us. All right? It's good enough. It's good enough. Friends, 
that's good enough to do what God says to do. So here we see God's direction to his people, some warnings, and we'll see some other reminders and warnings in the next few mornings to come. See you tomorrow morning. Thank you.